In today's tutorial, we're going to create this vintage dress, and we're going to start with three rectangular pattern pieces. So here we are in Clo, and I'm going to use our avatar Camilla to help us. I'm going to use my rectangle tool here. I'm going to click once my first rectangle, and I'm going to pause here so that if you need to jot down the measurements, you can. My first rectangle is 10 inches wide by 13 inches high, and I'm placing it to the wearer's left side of her body. I'm also going to turn on my line measurements so that you can see the measurements here in the 2D window. My second pattern piece is going to be 26 inches wide by 6 inches high. This width is the uh, approximate circumference of her waist where I'm going to want to wrap this around. And my third rectangle, I'm going to put lower here. And I'm also going to make it 26 inches wide. And I'm going to make it 24 inches long. And this is what we will use to start our skirt. OK? Everything is going to come from here. This pattern piece here, this first rectangle, is going to, we are going to add some internal lines here that will allow us to create our bodice. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some internal lines. So I'm going to right click on my top segment line here and say offset as internal line. And I'm going to add the distance here at four inches and at eight inches. This is going to allow us to help us create our sleeve opening. Then I'm going to create another internal line, one internal line from the top a single internal line that is one and a half inches from the top. This is going to help us create our shoulder drop. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some segment point line points to our lines here to help us create the outline of our bodice. The first segment point I'm going to add in on the top here I'm going to right click with the add point split line tool and I'm going to input four inches from our center line here and click OK. I'm then going to do the same thing here on the center line. I'm going to right click and I'm going to split this line four and a half inches from this top line and click OK. Then I'm going to do the same thing here again in the same place. I'm going to right click and add a segment point line or segment point on the line one inch from the top. Next, I'm going to create uh, cut marks on these internal lines to help guide me with what I'm going to be doing. The first thing I'm going to do on this segment line, I'm going to right click and I'm going to make the longer measurement, the blue line, eight and a half inches. Then I'm going to, on this line, uh, the second line here, the middle, this is going to be the middle of the sleeve. I'm going to right click and create the blue, uh, at, change the blue line to eight inches. I'm going to click one more time on the same line, right click and create the longer line, the blue line, add a segment point at seven and a half inches. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, at this point that I just added, I'm going to add a baseline for reference from this point straight down to the line at eight inches below so that I can use that as reference when I get ready to shape my sleeve openings. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my internal polygon line tool and create the basic shape for my bodice. I'm going to start by using this segment point here at four and a half inches. I'm going to literally connect the dots. One, two, three, four and hit return 
Then I'm also from this one inch down dot, I'm going to add a single line from this point to here. This piece is our template that we're going to construct our bodice from. I'm also going to make a copy of this now. And I'm going to put this up top here. And I'm going to use a new function in Clo known as archive. So I'm going to place this here so that I can have it as reference or possibly use it later. I'm going to right click. And from my contextual menu, I'm going to choose archive. I'm going to make a mirrored copy of this piece. Copy, mirror, paste. This allows, this will allow me to create the front and the back pieces of my bodice. I'm going to look at the back piece first, and I am going to cut this piece from here. I am going to then shift select these two lines, the shoulder and the sleeve opening, and also do cut. I can then delete these extra pieces. And I can also select this internal line and delete that. That is, this is going to give me the shape for my, the back of my bodice. In the front here, I'm going to double click on this line. This then selects my entire shape on top. I can cut this and delete the two pieces that are extra. I then need to shape my neck openings and my sleeve openings. So the neck opening, I would like to be a scoop neck. So I'm going to use my edit curve tool and I am going to shape this visually how I would want this to, to appear. I'd like a nice, more open curve shape. I'm going to do the same thing on my sleeve and create the front part of my sleeve using the the two dots here as reference and also the baseline that I added to create my the shape of the front of my sleeve opening on my front of my bodice. Next, I'm going to do the same thing on the back collar. Just slope this down slightly to give me a nice rounded shape. And I am going to use this other segment point here on this middle line to help me shape my back sleeve opening. I am now finished with, with the creation of the two pieces of the bodice. I'm going to delete the internal lines by right clicking on the background and locking all my pattern outlines. This allows me to marquee select just the internal lines and delete them using the keyboard. I'm going to bring back my pattern outlines by unlocking them. And I am going to delete this segment point here in the center of the back as I do not need it anymore. For this pattern piece, I'm going to make a symmetric copy, symmetric pattern with sewing, as this will be the other half of my back of the bodice. For this piece, I'm going to use my edit pattern tool click this center line, right click and say unfold symmetric editing with sewing. This will open up my pattern so that I can easily place this where it would need to go and not need to sew it. Finally, the pattern piece that I want to affect is the skirt pattern piece. And I'm going to use the slash and spread tool here, fullness line tool. This is a very convenient tool that is going to allow me to add shape to my skirt. The first thing I need to do, as it says on my cursor, is click on a start and end point for the fullness line. So that is this line here with these two segments being the uh, segment points of the fullness line. Then I need to designate the slash line, the line that is going to stay the same. I then get this dialog box that opens up and it's asking me to change the fullness. I would like this to be a very full skirt, so I'm going to add a large measurement in there of 80 or more. Oops. I'm going to add 100 in there, 
so that it almost goes halfway around. And the direction I'm going to change from start to both so that in my 2D window, my skirt is symmetrical. So I now have the basic pieces of my dress. I'm simply going to select these pieces and move them out of the way temporarily. I can, I'm now ready to arrange my patterns around my avatar. I do this, of course, by showing the arrangement points. I'm going to start by arranging the front of the bodice on the front of my avatar and the two, back the two symmetric back pieces on the back of the avatar. This is our waistband, which goes at the center of her waist. The skirt itself, we are not going to place around our avatar. Rather, what we are going to do is put this into place visually so that when we sew it together, it will wrap around our avatar. I'm simply going to make this so this appears more flat horizontal to the ground so that when I sew it together, it will then move into place. As this is, has, is a fairly simple pattern, I can simply use segment sewing to connect all of the segments that need to be sewn together. I've sewn the side seams. I have sewn, here is the top of the shoulder. I'm going to temporarily connect the center back. I am going to one to segment sew the waistband to the bodice and segment sew the waistband to the skirt, the center back of the skirt together, the center back of the waistband together. All of my segments have been sewn, oh, pardon me, I did not sew the back part of the, I did not sew the back part of the bodice together, my apologies. I'm gonna use free sewing in this case, one to multiple free sewing to bring all these pieces together. The shape of the bodice is going to allow for some gathering around the waist. There we go. So now, if I simulate, this will come together. Next, I would like to start adding some details in. The first thing I'd like to do is I would like to add a smocking waistband. I'm going to do this by lowering this waistband down. Then I want to add some internal lines, horizontal internal lines here. I'm going to shift select the top and the bottom segment lines of the pattern piece. I'm going to then right click and say distribute internal line between segment. By default, this window opens up with a single offset. I'm going to increase this to six and say OK. I am then going to select this pattern piece and right click and say layer clone over. This is going to make an exact copy of my pattern piece and sew it to the pattern piece that is underneath it. There is a small edit we need to make to this. We need to first remove the sewing from all the way around this pattern piece. This will affect when we add a less elastic to our waistband to get the smocking effect. Then we need to segment sew the top to the top and the bottom to the bottom. And then these two pieces, the two center seam together as we did the original. The next thing we need to do is select one of the, the patterns that make up the waistband and we need to remove the linked editing between the two. The reason we do that is because we add elastic effect to the internal lines of just the piece that is under the, the outer part of the waistband. So when I select these pieces, I'm going to click on the elastic effect. The ratio I'm going to make 100. I do not want it to get smaller. I do not want it to get uh, longer. So by making the ratio 100, this then functions as mobile on tape so that the line does not move. 
The next thing that I want to do is I want to make the pattern piece that is on top longer so that the elastic effect pulls our pattern piece in and creates the smocking effect. So I'm going to slide this over. I'm going to click the handle here on the right side and I'm going to drag. And before I let go, I'm going to right click. This is going to allow me to designate how wide that I want to make this. Our original was 26. I'm going to double this to 52. And as you can see in both the 2D and 3D window, we will see the shape of the waistband change. I'm going to reset the 2D arrangement of this, and then I am going to turn on my arrangement points to again apply this where it would need to go around the waist. While this is selected, and because this is so much larger than the one that is underneath, while this segment point, where this arrangement point is selected, I'm actually going to go into my property editor, and under the arrangement option, I'm going to move the position Y out so that my, oops, my apologies, I'm going to move the offset out so that this opens up around the waist and leaves me a little bit of a gap. I'm going to then turn off my arrangement points and slide this down a little bit and I'm going to simulate this together. As you can see, the garment immediately starts to show the smocking effect. When we go and raise the particle distance of this, the smocking effect will be much more pronounced. I'm then also going to select the top and the bottom segments, and I am going to, on the selected line, I'm going to apply shuring. This will add to the visual effect of the wrinkles that happen when you do smocking. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give us a like, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to find more tutorials about how to succeed with Clo. Thank you.